good afternoon good evening everyone i hope that all of you are doing very well and doing great so guys let's get started without wasting your time this is the agenda for today we will talk about what is azure what exactly is your platform the different azure services that we have what exactly is power bi and the different components of it at the same time we have also talked about azure ml as well okay now moving on talking about with our first topic for today azure what is a azure basically what exactly is an azure azure is basically a cloud computing platform which is given by microsoft so basically this is nothing but just a set of cloud services which helps your organization to meet the business challenges that you can have so be, uh, because in the case of azure you are going to have full fledged services which are available online on the cloud itself in the case of azure it provides you the freedom to build manage deploy application on massive or a global network wherein you can create uh, any of the resources on the cloud on demand and you can read the resources whenever you, you are not acquiring. Now, that's the biggest benefit that we have uh, in the cloud. At the same time, you can use your favorite tools and framework. Now, Azure is a uh, basically cloud service which is provided by Microsoft, where you have a benefit that if you want to integrate with Microsoft products like database you have, you have uh, programming applications like C Sharp, Visual Studio, you can integrate that with those uh, applications very easily. At the same time, uh, it's like a on-demand. So whenever you want to uh, need any kind of services application, you can create on-demand. When you don't need it, you can simply decondition those services and you are not going to basically get charged for it. So you are going to have that huge benefit that you are not going to basically get paid for something. Like In other words, you are not paying for something that you are not using it. You will have the greatest benefit that you are only going to have paying for some services that you require. That's the biggest benefit that we basically have with the cloud. So at the same time, uh, with the help of Azure, one of the biggest uh, other advantage is that, um, you know, we are uh, going to get all the things into a single umbrella. I'm going to show you Azure portal as well, how it looks like. So that's uh, one of the biggest benefit that we have with Azure. Now, these are some of the Azure features that we have, uh, wherein like it's on demand provisioning means that whenever you want to uh, need a resource, I need a virtual machine. I need a basically specific computer with, uh, let's say, 8 GB of RAM, 1 TB of hard drive. Whenever I need, I'm going to spin up the resource and I'm going to be charged for it. There is no need to maintain data centers. Like if I'm going to go with on-premise, I have to maintain a data center. I have to basically pay for it. All those kind of management and things I have to do, right? So basically, in the case of Azure, the biggest benefit that we get is that each and everything is basically into the single umbrella we have. It's not like that we have to go through uh, certain loops and all. Uh, your each and everything is going to lie into a single umbrella wherever whenever you want to uh, access something it is going to be available for uh, as per your uh, need only so for example if i'm going to spin let's say a laptop or the server in my environment i have to basically pay for that server out right at the same time i have to basically pay for the server i basically have to pay for the license for the operating system that i'm going to install i have to maintain that server out i have i will require optimum cooling conditions everything at the same time i will also require other things like for example uh, it is always going to be a recurring cost and all which can become the nightmare for me right so in the case of uh, you know azure the biggest benefit is that you can spin up the resources whenever you need and whenever you don't require you can just kill those resources and you're not going to be charged for it so that's the biggest benefit that we uh, get in the case of azure which is on demand whenever you need you pay whenever you don't require we don't uh, you know need for resources Next is scalability in minutes. So you can scale out or scale up the resources depending on the usage or the needs that we have. The third is pay only as we use. So uh, you are going to only pay for those uh, services that you are using. It's not like that unnecessary. You are basically paying for the services that you know you are not using. So whatever you use, you are going to pay for it. Like in the home, you have electricity. So you basically get paid for the unit of electricity, whatever you are using. So it's that much transparent. At the same time, you have expired resources. So you have to focus only on your need, not on the hardware specification. Next is efficiency of experts. So wherein you can utilize the entire skills, knowledge, resources of the experts, wherein uh, it's not like that uh, you have to spend a lot of time accessing through certain sites and all. You're going to have the benefit that you can utilize your entire skills. At the same time, for example, if I had to create a virtual machine, I have to follow a couple of steps. If I had to make any server live with IP address, I had to learn internal IP, external IP mapping, Azure take care of everything. I will show you a small demonstration as well later on, which will give you more clarity. Plus, it's measurable. Each and every unit of uh, Azure basically is measurable. 
it's not like that uh, is going to basically going to charge for you something like you said that you are not using so you will have the entire transparency you will be able to see that you know in, in azure each and everything is measurable it's basically under the single umbrella we have so these are the couple of azure features we have now moving on talking about the azure platform so in the case of azure platform it's uh, all the things are going to be available i'm going to show you the azure platform you talk about um, you know different type of storage services azure supports four different type of storage services buzz file queue table you have different type of database so each and everything is lying in a single platform you want to spin up let's say a uh, different operating system like for example windows 10 windows server side windows 2016 windows 2019 you want to create different you know unix based operating system like for example if you want to use ubuntu and all all those versions are going to be available in the case of azure now talking about azure services let's take a look what all azure services that we have the first is compute so basically in the case of uh, compute we are going to have each and everything in detail like for example if i want to create an operating system as per my requirement i can create it out like my requirement is that i need an operating system with 8 gb of ram and uh, let's say 1 tb of hard drive i can basically have the customized version i can customize it for as you basically have a uh, pre plans available means if i need for staging if i need for pre production if i need for production these are different plans available the service plan you can opt for a service plan and it's going to build up the environment there is no need to worry about IP uh, providing the IPs, enabling the firewalls, talking about security, talking about um, you know configuration of the operating system. You just click on one button, click on uh, the plan that you have, and Azure is going to take care of all the needs. Plus, it's not mandatory that um, you are going to uh, you know you basically have to mention all these details if you want. You can. Otherwise, with a single click, Azure will take care of everything. So that is Azure. Next, basically, is the migration. So Azure has one of the greatest advantage for the migration. Now, if I want to migrate my services from my on-premise to the cloud, you know, the biggest challenge that we have is like how we are going to migrate. Let's say I have tons of data, you know, in the organization, you are not going to have like one GB, two GB. You are going to have multiple TBs, like PBs of data. If you don't know what PB is, PB means petabyte. Like you have KB, then you have MB, then we have um, GB, then you have TB. Then you have after TBs, you have petabytes. So if you want to migrate that huge amount of data, it's a pain. Uh, maybe if my network is poor, sometimes uh, uh, there is some uh, network chalking, there is a throttling of bandwidth, it's, it's going to uh, drop the package. So my data has become inconsistent. As you don't have so many tools, so many ways with the help of which you can migrate the data very easily. The next basically is security and compliance. As you are basically provide you security at the price of nuts, being honest, it has one of the very good feature which is known as Key Vault, with the help of which you can, uh, you know, create the entire things very easily. Next thing that we basically have is a storage. So basically, in the case of Azure, you can have a different type of storage, like I said, blob, file, queue, table, depending on the requirement that you have. Next is database that we have, like uh, you can have different type of database. If you want, you can deploy the database on the server or you can basically deploy the database as a service that I will show you small. Next is messaging services. Azure supports different type of messaging services, synchronous, asynchronous, uh, wherein you can basically integrate with the application directly. Next is networking. So with the help of Azure, you can create your uh, custom networks. So people think that this is Azure, so you cannot create your uh, custom networks. So it's not true. You can provide the internal IP address. You can provide external IP address, depending on the requirement you have. And the next one you have is management tools for monitoring like same of other tools that you need. Basically, it's going to be available under a single umbrella. Now, all these different domains in Azure that I have talked about, guys, in itself, it's a different world. But I have given you the overview because the thing is that we have to, uh, like, we don't have, uh, you know, sufficient time. This is just one hour. So I want to deliver the maximum as much as I can. But generally, entire uh, single domain in itself is a different world. So we can talk about for one domain, like for example, compute storage services. We can talk about more than two hours just for a single domain. So depending on the single, uh, you know, stringent timeline that we have, we are trying to deliver as much as best we can. Now talking about what is Power BI. So Power BI basically is a free, free, free business intelligence cloud service provided by Microsoft. Since this is provided by Microsoft, you can integrate with Azure very easily. At the same time, it provides non-technical business users with certain tools like aggregation. You can combine the data, sharing the data, wherein if you want to share the data between different components, different storage types, you can share that easily. 
Third is analyzing. If you want to analyze the data from different sources, you can combine data from different sources and you can analyze. Last is visualizing. So if you want to have the visualization of the entire data, you can. You will be able to basically, uh, you know, have the pie chart graphs and everything. Talking about components of Power BI, the first component is Power Query. So basically, uh, in this, with the help of Power Query, that's the first component we have. You can search, access, and transform public from basically, you know, whether you have a data on a uh, public cloud or you have basically on the internal data center. So you can basically search, access, and transform public and internal data sources with the help of Power Query very easily. At the same time, second is Power uh, Pivot. So it's an easy data modeling uh, in memory analytics with Power Pivot. Third one is Power View. So you can analyze, visualize, and display data as an interactive data visualization tool. The fourth one basically is Power Map, so which basically brings data to life with interactive visualization. So we have other components as well, which is Power BI service. So which is again highly available use service. So you can share your data views and work groups refreshable from on-premise uh, and uh, cloud-based data sources. If you don't know what on-premise is, something which is at your premises, something which is lying in your data center. Like for example, I have office in, let's say, New Delhi. So in my New Delhi office, if I am hosting my server systems, so something which is available in my data center is known as on-premise. Next is Power BI Q&A. So you can ask the questions and you can get immediate answers with the natural language query. Next one we have is data management gateway, which is known as DMG as well, not DMZ. DMZ is a, a different thing, which is demilitarized zone. So this is data management gateway. You can ask questions and you can get immediate answers with natural uh, you know, language query. At the same time, it can provide periodic data refreshers. You can expose your tables and uh, you know, views as object data to uh, external devices. Next is data catalog which is nothing uh, the metadata for uh, search functionality user can easily discover and reuse query. So being a metadata, it means that it's about data about data. You can have a nesting available here. So these are the different eight components that we have of Power BI. Now talking about the structured learning, if you're going to take a course from us, how the entire journey is going to look like, let me show you in a quick one minute. In the first class, you will learn about Power BI, its components, core components with the practical hands-on. In the next class, you will learn about Power BI desktop data transformation with the practical hands-on on it. In the third class, you will learn, learn about data analysis expressions uh, with the practical hands-on. In the fourth class, you will learn about data visualization, different ways you can visualize the data, uh, you know, how you can integrate with on-premise and the cloud, so all that kind of things in detail. Next class, you will learn about Power BI service, the Q&A, uh, quick insights, basically the components with the practical hands-on. And in the sixth class, you will learn about different connectivity modes that we have with the hands-on. In the seventh class, you will learn about Power BI report servers with the hands-on on it. And in the eighth class, you will learn about using R and Python Power BI with the hands-on. In the ninth class, you will basically learn about advanced analytics Power BI with hands-on. And in the last class, you are going to have in-class project, which is going to cover all the areas, domains that you have learned in every class. You have to utilize the knowledge and you are going to work on a project so that you it's going to give you industry experience as well, like how the things can uh, come up in the industry. Now, talking about Azure ML we have, so basically in this we have a context filter. So context filter is an independent filter. Any other filters that you set are defined as dependent filters because they process only the data that passes through the context filter, which eventually helps you to have the uh, improved performance and creative selective filter. So yes, that was about it. Now let's take a look at Azure portal and just understand this, like how it can make your life easy. So let me just launch the portal for you guys. Okay. So this is Azure portal, which it looks like you are going to have everything into a single umbrella. Now, like I said, if you basically want to, let's say, create a you know virtual machine, you can here and let's say I want to create a virtual machine. Now, when I'm going to get a virtual machine, you know that, like, for example, if I had installed the operating system, installation of operating system will take around almost an hour, right? If I'm going to create a virtual machine here, it will be created in less than five minutes. So you have to basically just provide the name, select the operating system you want to use, like Ubuntu, Windows, any other operating system you want to use, you can select from the list. And there is no need to provide any networking. Like, if you want, you can decide the disk, like I said, you can decide the disk size, which decide you want to use. SSD, HDD, you can decide the networking. 
but if you're just going to provide the you know naming convention here azure is going to take care of everything that's why it's widely used plus if you talk about database as well if you want you can install the database the traditional way we used to do we basically deploy the database on our operating system right or the other way is that you can deploy the database directly here on your azure so it's a database as a service with the help of which without managing the operating system you have to leave that entire overhead on the azure and you can basically uh, you know create the entire database here itself so that's a huge advantage you are going to get that you are going to have the entire database created and available for your use at the same time uh, you can have different type of storages you want like like i said you want to basically store entire things out you can store the things in a different way at the same time if you want to protect something from a security perspective you can use keyword again this is like right now at a higher level guys but we keep on conducting webinars where we pick up one thing and like for example one component i can pick it up and i can go in more detail this is at a very high level i want to give you overview about it so that you have the much more knowledge okay right, guys we can wrap up the session for today uh, it's an immense pleasure to meet all of you guys wishing all of you a great day ahead